Hi there, this is the fourth and final part of my short story, Son of Gord. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please be sure to leave me a comment. And if this is the first time you're seeing this, then you might want to go back and watch the previous three parts. Otherwise, it might not make much sense. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. He knew he should not be there, but he felt drawn to her. He positioned himself against a wall beside a bed covered with skins at the opposite end of the room to where she milled about, humming sweetly to herself. She was incredibly graceful and seemed to float around the room and a beautiful aroma trailed in her wake. Even though she could not see him, he stood fidgeting nervously, pulling at his clothes. Then disaster struck. As he fidgeted from one foot to the other, he stumbled awkwardly against the wall and accidentally pressed the release switch on his cloaking device, and suddenly he was fully visible to her. She shrieked. Gord smiled nervously, and then she fell to the floor and started mumbling and waving her arms in a similar way to the two men he had encountered previously. As she knelt on the floor in front of him, he thought to himself, I forgot to re-enter the damn safety code. He stared, bewildered, at the sublime figure kneeling on the floor in front of him. I'm Gord, he ventured tentatively. Not quite sure how or even if his auto-translate would decipher his words into her primitive tongue. She immediately started flapping her arms more violently. Well, this is awkward, he thought to himself. Slowly, he lowered himself down and sat on the edge of the bed. She babbled something about feet and water and scuttled off into the corner of the room and produced a jug and then deftly slipped off his shoes and proceeded to wash his feet. What a peculiar custom, he thought. He shifted awkwardly as she continued feverishly to dab his feet. What is your name? he said slowly. She looked up at him thoughtfully. She was so beautiful. He stared into her expressive eyes as she said, My name is Mary. His auto-translate was clearly beginning to assimilate her dialect. I am from Cygnus, he said, gesturing skyward. Her brow furrowed slightly as she said something that sounded like stars. He smiled in assent and she beamed up at him, looking quite pleased with herself. He instinctively cupped her cheek and she looked up at him shyly. He kissed her on the forehead, causing her to giggle playfully. On sickness, Gord had a bit of a reputation as a libertine and loved spending time in the company of women. He could not help thinking that she was flirting with him. He lifted her face and kissed her gently on the lips. She blushed but did not recoil from him. Gently, he touched her forearms and gestured for her to sit beside him on the bed. She looked deep into his eyes. She seemed to be captivated by him. Maybe it was his glowing skin. Gord was used to being successful with women, but this was on another level entirely. She nuzzled against his chest and then lifted her face to his, and they kissed again, this time more passionately than before. After spending a good hour enjoying each other, they settled back and she looked at him and sighed contentedly. Gord smiled at her and thought to himself, maybe this trip hadn't been a waste of time after all. They lay there for some time in the afterglow. Then suddenly there was a rattle outside and the door swung inwards. Joseph, she exclaimed. Gordon sat up with a start and immediately started pulling on his clothes. This wasn't the first time he had been in this kind of situation. A short squat man ambled into the room carrying a large bag. He looked towards them. Mary pulled the bedclothes up to cover herself. Joseph was short but powerfully built. He stared at Gord, his eyes flashed with anger. Reaching into his bag produced some kind of mallet. Sitting on the edge of the bed, Gord pulled on his trousers, gathered up the remainder of his clothes and leapt to his feet. Joseph was obstructing the doorway. Mary shouted at him, presumably begging him to calm down, but it was no use. Gord was going to cop it this time for sure. Mary stood up, clutched the bedclothes to her and rushed at him. Gord seized his opportunity and bolted for the door. He managed to stumble and fall out of the small dwelling, narrowly avoiding a blow from Joseph's mallet knocking over a large urn in the process which scattered into pieces behind him. He was out in the open, partially clothed and running for his life. Joseph negotiated his way around the shards of broken pottery and began to chase Gord down the street, wielding the mallet above his head and shouting incoherently. 
The chase continued for some time as bemused locals looked on, unsure what to make of the strange half-naked glowing individual terrorising their peaceful settlement. In an effort to get away from his pursuer, Gord scrambled down alleyways, sometimes leading nowhere, forcing him to retrace his steps or barge his way through people's houses. Loud and coherent cries of indignation followed behind as he raced around the settlement, causing absolute chaos. Feathers flew from strange clucking creatures. Large, clumsy, four-legged animals with pendulous underbellies obstructed his path panicked by his palpable sense of desperation and causing even greater destruction as they scattered in his wake. When he was finally certain he had lost his pursuer, Gord paused for a few minutes on a hillside, put on the remainder of his clothes and set his home finder to the hopper's location. Before setting off again, he activated his cloaking device, this time ensuring to input the safety code. Gord pressed a button on the side of his hood and Olmy answered sleepily, Gordon, what have you done now? I'm about an hour's walk away. Call mother and send her our coordinates. Okay, Gordon, he replied. Before Olney could question him further, Gord cut him off. It was a long, lonely walk back to the hopper. Gord thought about Mary. He'd kind of hoped to stick around for a while and spend more time with her, but instead he was now heading back to the hopper. His mother had been called Disappointment, Scandal, righteous anger, penance and who knows what else awaited his return to Cygnus. When he eventually returned to the cave, his mother was waiting for him. They had already loaded the hopper onto the cargo bay of her ship. She stared at him. She didn't need to say anything. Her looks said it all. He climbed into her ship, sat in the co-pilot seat and looked down at his knees. The doors closed behind him and they lifted off. After they left the planet's atmosphere, she did not appear to be in any hurry to make the jump into hyperspace, seemingly preferring to let Gordon stew. I'm sorry, Mum, he said quietly. I know, son, but it's your father and brother you need to be worried about, adding, we won't rush back, we'll give them time to cool down a bit. As they hovered off into the blackness, his mother said, I found this in a box in the cellar. It seems your brother had been making music. She pressed on a cassette player and the distinctive voice of his brother Ziggy sang out from the speakers. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our mind. Rather catchy, isn't it? His mother said, raising her eyebrows. That was Son of Gord, written by me, Jack Tuffy. I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, thank you for your support. I will be adding more content like this. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.